the Terence Donnelly Center for Cellular and Biomolecular Research. Also known as the CCBR, or simply Donnelly, is an experimental research building located at 160 College Street, Toronto, Canada, created to support the University of Toronto's postgraduate, doctorate, and professional bioengineers and disease researchers. Inspired by the idea that most breakthroughs occur outside of the lab, the Donnelly Center is designed to enable chance encounters and interdisciplinary interaction through transparency, overlapping program, and active circulation spaces in a sustainable, functional, and state-of-the-art research facility. The Donnelly Center achieves most of these goals and is a comfortable and popular indoor public space and thoroughfare for the St. George campus and a badge of identity for its employees. The CCPR is not so much an object as a system that coerces a variety of disciplines to interact. Donnelly's site was previously Tattle Creek Road, an important service alley for the surrounding campus buildings. It is located in the southeast corner of U of T's St. George campus, near the intersection of College Street and University Avenue. This is a dense area close to the hospital district, and Tattle Creek Road was flanked by the Fitzgerald Medical Research Building to the east, the Roseburg Institute of Biomaterials to the west, and the Medical Sciences Building to the north. The university dreamed of a new state-of-the-art medical facility, but one that was only 60 feet wide, maintained an existing loading dock, and also negotiated a one-story grade change. An international design competition was held, and the winners were Benish Architects, a German firm from Stuttgart experienced in institutional buildings. Their design used the constraints to their advantage, embracing the site and producing functional, sensitive, and nuanced public and private space. The CCBR is set back from the street to preserve the neighboring building's entrances and provide a public forecourt. It hugs the west side of the site to maintain a footpath to Queen's Park in the east. This move also creates the opportunity for an enclosed garden on the west side, mediating the connection to the Roseboro building and using the brick facade to liven the ground floor. To negotiate the grade change, CCBR's ground plane steps up gradually from College Street, finally connecting to the Medical Sciences Building's lobby. The ground floor embraces the thoroughfare nature of the site and a large public space is created at the intersection of the north-south lobby connection and the east-west pedestrian path. This space is livened by colorful skylights and irregular pods containing offices, seminar spaces, and the cafeteria, which protrude to disrupt the corridor, creating niches for students and staff to aggregate. By stepping up the ground floor, the loading docks are preserved and simply covered by the public path. The private facilities are on the upper levels. Programs are organized into vertical zones to create an efficient and functional layout most appropriate for scientific work. A public elevator shaft and service elevator are the primary means of vertical circulation. Open concept workspaces containing lab benches and personal desks are stacked on the east side. Support rooms containing heavier research equipment are stacked beside. Their walls are painted different colors, indicating research discipline. Private offices and meeting rooms are stacked along the south wall and have control of the double facade system. These three major program zones are connected by a single corridor on the west and south, which also serves as all the casual spaces including lunchroom, lounge space, and impromptu meeting space. Two-story garden atria and extra staircases on the side create varying hall width for niches and vertical connections between levels. For contamination safety, scientists may not eat or drink at their desks, so casual spaces are heavily used for lunch and breaks. These lab spaces, as well as the animal testing facility in the basement, have high mechanical demands and have dedicated systems distributed between the rooftop service penthouse, the seventh floor, and the basement area. The middle service floor gives the CCBR a distinct waist, placed to respect the height of the surrounding buildings. As a result of the program zones, its need for interconnectivity and transparency, and Benish Architect's sustainable mandate, the CCBR has unique facades on each side. The north facade is a curtain wall, providing light into the building. The east has a pattern of laminated colored glass representing genetic code, with operable windows for natural ventilation. The west facade has dotted fritting applied to its glazed panels and is highly transparent to show Toronto the colours of Donnelly's 11 research departments painted on the hallway walls. The south facade has a double skin, which is designed to reduce heat loss and gain 
and provide wind and acoustic protection from the street, while still maintaining transparency. Each office has control of a portion of the double facade, and can control temperature and ventilation by opening an operable awning window in the first skin, into an 800mm airspace. They can also control light levels with motorized dampers and blinds located in the second skin. A computer system monitors the building environment and overrides when needed. Environmentalism is also designed onto the inside. The computer allows for fluctuation within comfort range temperatures, varying by season, and the garden atrias are watered by roof runoff collected by an integrated stormwater system. These features, especially the facades, give the Donnelly Center and the medical faculty a fashionable, accessible, and distinct identity. The public forecourt draws the visitors up from the street, smoothly transitioning into the ground floor with a smooth sequence of paths and stairs. Daylight filters down through the six-story bamboo garden and illuminates the historic brick facade behind Staff and students gather in the garden, in public, and yet with a sense of privacy. This feeling is also found in the private upper floors where indoor gardens create calming private spaces or gathering spaces for impromptu conversations. Like on the ground floor, circulation spaces are made to encourage interaction. Working from the observation that scientific breakthroughs occur outside of the lab, the hallways are made wide to allow congregation without congestion and doors are glass to increase the connection between lab and hall. Long tables and counters provide spaces for informal meetings and lounging with views of the bamboo garden or of Toronto's roofscape. The storage and equipment rooms are not a barrier to transparency. Glass doors create visual connections from the corridors through to the labs. These views make research visible and accessible to other students and to professionals. The labs contain wet labs, workbenches, and private desks. The desks are against the east curtain wall to receive natural daylight and ventilation. The narrow floor plate and the organization of program into long narrow bands enables nearly every space to receive daylight from either the east or the west. On all the upper floors, the south corridor is the most active space. It connects vertical circulation, the elevators, to horizontal circulation, the hallway, and contains the three main things office workers wait for, the elevators, the coffee machine, and the microwave. Lunch tables and gardens provide seating, and the private offices and meeting rooms also open into these spaces through transparent glass doors. The intersection of all these things and activities results in a hub that enables these spontaneous encounters that lead to breakthroughs. This space, like the intersecting corridors on the ground floor, is an activated and programmed armature of circulation and embodies the CCBR's mandate of interconnectivity. With such a purposeful mandate, the Donnelly Center, of course, is also the subject of much controversy. While many say that they enjoy the daylight, the green spaces, and the open labs, others complain that the hallway is often heated and the labs overcooled. The double facade allows users to control southern light, but only the corner offices are able to control glare shining in between the skins from the east or west. Others complain that the open concept of the labs results in smell and low air quality, that the increase in transparency has resulted in the loss of privacy and confidentiality, and that the inconvenience of no food or drink at desks results in frequent breaks and low worker efficiency. The CCBR's worst failure is its unparalleled high energy use. Statistics from U of T's website have shown that it consumes 1,047 kilowatt hours per meter square, far more than an average 400 kilowatt hour per meter square building, or even U of T's other wet labs. The high energy use might be a result of thermal bridges, lack of insulation, undistinguished solar and ventilation control, heavy HVAC loads, or maybe even due to the automated HVAC system. However, despite all these criticisms, Donnelly has still achieved much success. An impromptu conversation with some of the Donnelly scientists showed that the Donnelly Center is a place people like working at that gives the resident students and researchers a sense of identity and that scientists are proud to be part of.